You have all heard of artificial intelligence. Many people fear that one day, a rogue computer program will rise up and take over society. Movies like to encourage this fear of computers. You have machines like Ultron, Skynet from The Terminator, Whopper from War Games, or HAL 9000 from A Space Odyssey. These are all presented as cold, merciless machines that are self-aware and devoid of any humanity or mercy. But this is not a realistic view of the future. Computers are not as smart as you think. Forget artificial intelligence. Let's talk about real intelligence. Every one of you here is so much more, import, uh, so much more intelligent than a computer. You have something that a computer has never had the ability to understand language. One of the things that has always fascinated me about the human mind is our amazing ability to interpret and analyze text. Think about all that you take into account when hearing or reading just one sentence. Take this headline from a newspaper. Milk drinkers turn to powder. This sentence is ambiguous because it contains multiple interpretations. Of course, it is talking about people drinking milk, not turning to dust. But how do you know this? Your brain is very good at sifting the possible interpretations of a sentence and deciding on the most likely outcome. This one confusing sentence means so much more than the sum of its parts. It is more than a sequence of letters, more than the words that make it up. Your brain has to decipher conversations and words like this every day. We constantly navigate ambiguity, vagueness, implicit meaning, and contextual reference, often without even thinking about it. Humans have a natural ability with language. We, de we developed this complex, unstandardized method of communication and the foundation of our whole society is language. But for computers, this is very different. A computer is often used as an analogy for the human mind. But this isn't a very good comparison because your brain is not a machine. We originally created computers to perform mathematical operations faster and more reliably than humans. From the very beginning, the foundations of computing were numbers. Broken down to the most fundamental level, there are only two decisions a computer can make, on or off, yes or no, one or zero. Based, a computer operates by going through thousands of logical operations, and based on these operations, it can do math and display symbols. Real language, however, is completely opposite. It's built on a framework of words and meaning, connotations and understanding. You cannot break down language into small parts without losing the essence of what it means. So how do programs like Siri and Google Assistant work? Well, there are several different techniques to simulate understanding. Some language processing is done using artificial intelligence while other, simpler tasks can be completed using statistics and generalizing from data. The task of having a computer analyze and interpret text is called natural language processing, or NLP. You perform language processing tasks all the time when you read or listen to, to a conversation. You gather contextual information, intent and meaning from the words being spoken and arrive at an understanding of tone, mood, and sentiment. The words that people choose and, that, and the way they choose to say them all contribute to a deeper meaning in a sentence. How many of you like Shakespeare? In a way, Shakespeare is the height, re represents the height of English language. His writing is full of wit, dual meaning, ambiguity. 
this often makes it hard for even people to understand. How about this quote? Do you know which play this came from? Alas, I think he shall become approached in the day when little strain would be attained into being never fed. And who is but a chain and subjects of his death? I shall not sleep. Well, actually, this was generated by a computer program. After being trained on an entire collection of Shakespeare plays, it learned the structure and form of that type of writing. Notice that most of these words are real words. Given a large enough data set, a computer basically just memorizes the English language. And the few strange word, words, like strain, seem typical of something you would find in an old English play. But as a result of attempting to quantify all the language, the output is completely meaningless. It copied the structure of a Shakespeare play very well, including names that it encountered in the text, the unique line breaks, and varying lengths of dialogue. But a computer cannot create meaning. All of this is gibberish, though only slightly more so than actual Shakespeare. <laughs> How about something else very structured? The same that guy that created the Shakespeare program also tried it out to recreate computer source code. Though not really natural language, code provides a good example of a highly structured form of information. And because of that, the computer was able to, cop, uh, to identify the structure of the code quite easily. After looking at a huge database of Linux source code, the program was able to open and close brackets, complete if statements, and even add a few comments here and there. But while the syntax is generally correct, much like the Shakespeare, it doesn't do anything. It copied the structure but it couldn't create meaning. Recently, Burger King decided that they would try to use artificial intelligence to create advertisements for them. They gave a computer a bunch of real commercials and let it try to copy the structure. The result is pretty hilarious. The chicken crossed the road to become a sandwich. Burger King encouraged the chicken, made with white meat chicken, bed of lettuce for you to sleep on, bed of mayonnaise for extra sleep. The chicken sandwich from Burger King tastes like bird. BK logo appears. As you saw, it was able to identify the structure of a commercial rather well. It noticed that every ad ends in a logo. BK logo appears, and that the ad should be about food. <laughs> but what it came up with doesn't mean anything. Bed of mayonnaise for, you to, for extra sleep? Of course, it served its purpose rather well. After all, here we are watching an ad. I wanted to experiment and learn some of the practical ways that NLP is accomplished. To do this, I found a resource called the Natural Language Toolkit and fed the computer some text. When a computer program stores text, it exists as a bunch of ones and zeros. Every character is recorded, even spaces. I discovered that to go from a bunch of characters to data that is useful for processing usually takes several steps. Any text, whether it is short, user inputted sentence, or entire collection of books, usually goes through a process of isolating words and sentences. The computer must be told exactly where words begin and end, because a space means nothing for it. And then words are usually tagged for parts of speech to identify their role in a sentence. As you can imagine, this is a very difficult task. The sequence of, this sequence of words was tagged by comparing them to a large English data set that had already been tagged and labeled by people. The Shakespeare program is obviously not that useful. But when NLP is confined to a specific enough, enough area, a computer can understand language reasonably well. For example, earlier this year, Google announced a new product 
that they call duplex, that can carry out conversations over the phone. This is a really big deal for computer processing because their system has to be able to uh, handle the complications of speaking to real people. In order to accomplish such a momentous task, duplex has to be incredibly specialized and specific. You can't just talk to it about anything. The computer is only able to make a reservation at a restaurant and book a hair appointment. That's all. But it does it amazingly well. They perfected a speech algorithm to sound more like a human than anything else I've seen. Let's take a look at a demonstration video from Google and notice how well, how well the system is able to mimic human language. The computer, uh, the computer that's talking is on the left. So how can I help you? Hi, I'm calling to book a woman's haircut for a client. Um, I'm looking for something on May 3rd. Sure, give me one second. Mm-hmm. Sure, what time are you looking for around? At 12 p.m. We do not have a 12 p.m. available. The closest we have to that is a 1.15. Do you have anything between 10 a.m. and uh, 12 p.m.? Depending on what service she would like, what service is she looking for? Just a woman's haircut for now. Okay, we have a 10 o'clock. 10 a.m. is fine. Okay, what's her first name? The first name is Lisa. Okay, perfect. So I will see Lisa at 10 o'clock on May 3rd. Okay, great. Thanks. Great. Have a great day. Bye. Isn't this amazing? The tech, this technology is the forefront of artificial intelligence and natural language processing. What you just saw was a computer engaging in conversation with a real person, just like the way that we speak to each other. In the phone call, the computer was able to handle speaking to a person and fake understanding what was going on. I say fake because the computer isn't really conscious. It isn't aware of itself. It is really just a much more advanced version of the Shakespeare program, attempting to quantify and copy the structure of a phone call. It just does it really well. So instead of seeing the scary news headlines about how artificial intelligence spells doom for our civilization, think about how difficult it would be to make a computer on par with the human mind. The limit of computing is currently natural language processing. And unless the very framework that computers are built on drastically changes, your computer can't do much more than copy what human minds have already developed. They can't create meaning. But while listening to this talk, your mind was able to understand the words that I was saying and using your experience of language, derive my intent and meaning and arrive at a conclusion of your own. Language is more than just a bunch of words on a page. It's more than just the definitions of words in a dictionary. It's a way to share information feelings, and ideas with anyone willing to listen. Thank you.